Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. We are back to work on the ES-335 today. It's a big day here. We're going to get this guy assembled in this video. I've, uh, I've never done one of these before, so hopefully it works out getting everything in here. There's no, nowhere to insert it from the back. And I know some of you guys might be nervous about taking on a project quite like this for that reason. So let me just say, if I can do this, you can, okay? It's not, it's not super complicated. Again, I've never done it before, so I might eat my words there, but I don't think it's going to be all that difficult. Uh, and just, just see how I do it and you'll be able to see if it's something that you can do. I love this guitar. I'm very excited about it. So I'm going to be putting in some interesting components here, some quality components, not the stuff that came with the kit. Anyway, let's not waste a whole bunch of time talking about this one, but a couple things that I do want to say in terms of what's going into it before we get started. First of all, if you didn't already know this, the kit's from Solo Music Gear. Link in the description. It's an affiliate link if you want one. I'm not sure if they still have this exact one, but they've got a lot of awesome options and I've been working with them for a long time. Not for them, but with them. Uh, and I've really liked all the kits that I've built from them. Second, the paint on here is from Oxford Supply. It's an awesome nitrocellulose lacquer. They're based in Ontario. They do ship to the States now, so don't worry about that. You can get that from oxfordsupply.ca or through Solo Music Gear if you want. If you pick it up from their website and you let them know that uh, I sent you, I would appreciate that. What else? A number of the components going into this are also from Solo Music Gear, not the ones that came with the kit, but aftermarket stuff. For example, I'm putting in the Solo 3x3 black nickel locking tuners. Love these things, they're beautiful. I use them in pretty much all of my builds. Uh, I'm gonna be putting in a Gun Street wiring shop, uh, the wiring harness here. It's a pre-wired harness, but not one of those like affixed ones like obsidian wire. You need something more like this if you're gonna be doing a kit because the holes aren't in the exact same place as, you know, a Gibson would be or that kind of thing. Also, this affords you the opportunity to make modifications if you want. I don't know why you would, but you can. So check them out if you're interested in something like that. And then finally, one of my new favorite pickup brands here. I used these in my great guitar build off build this year. This is not quite the same though. Rail hammers. I'm using rail hammer pickups. You'll notice when I put these in, they're a little different. This is more like a P90 type of thing, okay? So I used the humbuckers. They were very aggressive last time. Um, these guys have a different look and they're, yeah, P90 style. I've never really played P90 pickups, not much. So really looking forward to this. I'm gonna get this guy assembled and uh, yeah, let's have some fun with it and I'll probably have to bring somebody in to play it again. There we go, I finally got a soft surface here instead of the piece of like foam that I was using before. A little bit of an improvement. You know, they said it would never happen, but uh, it looks like I am actually going to complete this guitar kit. First thing I'm gonna do is put in the bridge post. Well, sorry, second thing. First thing I'm gonna do, and make sure you don't forget this, is I'm gonna put my ground wire in. And I'm gonna give myself lots of ground wire here. And I'll just cut off the excess later because I, uh, well, I don't know how much I'm gonna need. I'm gonna have to do all of the assembly for this kit outside of the, outside of the guitar essentially. So the harness is gonna be have, have to be hooked up from there. So I wanna make sure I've got room to work. So I'm gonna create a little kind of hook on the end of this all of my insulated portion is going to go into the guitar and that hook is going to be kind of what stays in the post area and makes contact with the post. Now I do want to fish this out of here. To do that, I mean you can just use some needle nose pliers, but I have this like interesting little set of like surgical pliers that I inherited from my grandfather and I've found them useful for wiring. So I'm gonna use them. Carefully fish that out of there. And there we go. So I've got the bare wire portion that's been stripped in there right now. And that's the part that's gonna ground it. Now I can insert my bridge post. I have what's turning out to be a bit of an unfortunate habit here of just like putting all my hardware in the same place in my hardware bin when I get it. So you can never really tell what came with what. These seem like they're gonna work. They're snug though. Yep, those are those are gonna be tight. Better make sure the bridge fits on there before I pound them all the way in. What do you think? Should I just increase the neck angle a little bit and go with it like that? Alright, let's get these knocked in here. So for this, you can use something to press them in if you have the option. 
I do have an arbor press, but obviously it doesn't have a throat that would allow it to get to here. Um, and it doesn't matter. I don't need to press them in. I'm going to tap them in. I'm going to start with this guy because I want to make sure it's securing my wire. And you can do this with a couple different things as well. You can use a mallet if you have one. You can use the rubber side of a fret hammer, which is probably what I'm going to use. I've also got a mallet, of course. You can use a soft, you know, use a piece of wood and tap it with a hammer. Just don't go swinging at this thing with like a framing hammer. You will dent these, you'll, you'll mess up the mouth, it might not thread properly, and you can also damage your finish pretty easy if you're not careful. So my go-to for this ends up being my fret hammer from, you guessed it, Solo Music Gear. Want to avoid being too aggressive here. We don't want to crack our lacquer. Notice that I'm not holding it like this. We're not pounding in rail spikes here. Just need to be controlled. So I'm holding nice and close here so I don't have any, any real room for error. Well, room to make an error rather. I was really loud with this guitar for some reason. I'm glad that's over. All right, I really have no idea what the best order is to do this stuff in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get my pickups in there. Now for this type of guitar, you have to make sure you have, you know, the right curved and angled pickup rings. So I do, I'm gonna take these pickups out and install the ones that I actually intend to use. And what I've selected here, by the way, are a little different. I've got the Nuevo 90 neck pickup here, but I've chosen the Huevos 90 bridge. So the Huevos from these guys, these guys have Nuevo, Clean Cut, and Huevos in, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why they're using all these Spanish words, but anyway, that's what they've got in these P90 style ones. The Huevos one's more aggressive. So that's the bridge. That one only comes in bridge. The other two come in neck and bridge. So let's get our neck pickup set up here. We all know how this works. You just take these out. Now, <laughs> I haven't checked in the in the box for the rail hammers yet, but when I do pick up installs for Seymour Duncan, it always annoys me. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you guys get this too. Like the spring that they send you is like three times longer than it should be. I swear, it's impossible. It's <laughs> I end up having to cut them down. To actually get them installed. One down. It's not a bad looking pickup. No idea what it sounds like. And today I don't care to find out. There we go. Better keep that drill handy, I guess. You know, because I'm a big finesse guy when it comes to guitar setups, apparently. So these do come with their own screws and springs. I'm not too worried about it. By the way, these are hum cutter pickups. That's what they call them at Railhammer. And they give you a code to let you know what you're dealing with in terms of the colors, which is good because I don't know what I'm dealing with. Ready? Ooh. Isn't that beautiful? See what I mean? So yeah, it's not the same layout as the other one, um, but it's gorgeous. Make sure you do this the right way, okay? The <laughs> The bar, the rail, goes to the bass side of the guitar. All right, so right about there I realized that if I kept doing this video that way, it would end up being about two hours long. So you're welcome. Uh, we've switched gears here a little bit. I've installed the first pickup now. Uh, I just, you know, it's pretty easy. You feed the wire through, you screw it into place. Just make sure you get it in the right direction, like I said. And I twist the wires together because they're already partially stripped at the end feed them into the cavity, and then I use my little pliers here to pull them through. Uh, next I have to do the second pickup, which is fairly similar, but before I do that, because the wires all look the same, I just take a little piece of masking tape and I put that on there so I know which one's the neck pickup. This is more because I'm not that bright uh, than anything else. Now I pulled that wire back a little bit to make it easier to help me feed the bridge pickup wires through there and that's so that I can just push both through at once because the hole going from the pickup cavity to the main cavity there isn't very big. If there's a really big hole there that fits both wires easily, 
don't worry about it. Now I'm pulling that through, and then I can go ahead and get this pickup screwed into place, and uh, yeah, that's that part dealt with. I did make sure that I marked and pre-drilled the holes to get these uh, pickup rings in place before I sprayed. I actually was pretty diligent about getting most of the holes in place here, except uh, the one for one of the strap buttons, the one that goes on the back of the neck, basically, but that's not a big deal. I do that later in the video. So with those holes already kind of drilled and, and ready to go, it's a pretty simple matter of screwing these in place. I'm using the drill, but I don't recommend that. Uh, if you're going to, make sure your torque settings are low. You do not want to torque these down too hard, or you will crack the pickup rings. And that's, frankly, the last thing you want. It's, it's very irritating when that happens, I'm sure. So I just gently screw these into place, and... Uh, and that's it. Our, our pickups are, are in place and it's time to start wiring them up. The next thing to do is basically follow your wiring scheme. And this is not going to be a soldering tutorial, but everybody should kind of have a general concept of how this works. If not, go check out a tutorial. You tin your iron, you need a reasonable soldering station to be able to do this. Something a little better than those cheap irons that you can get at like Home Depot or Canadian Tire. I bought mine off Amazon. It's a Weller. I did a, a video about it a while ago, just one of the analog ones, but very reliable, and uh, I believe it is set out in the Amazon link in the description somewhere. That is an affiliate link, so if you use it, it helps me out. I'm just using a little helping hand here to, to keep the wires in place. That's what this little mechanism is that's holding them, so that I can tin them together. You'll see I've already uh, basically soldered two together for each pickup and taped them, because this is a fairly simple wiring scheme. Now I'm pulling out my wiring harness from Gun Street Wiring and I'm going to get that set up. Pretty straightforward really. I, I'm going to create a couple solder uh, pools on the back of a couple of these pots and for this you really do need a fairly hot iron so having, having the soldering station is kind of key for this part but I'm creating those little pools. There are already solder pools on the back of these but I like to do separate ones. I just find it a lot easier and, and it's not that difficult to do. So I'm doing that first and then I'm going to go ahead and wire up the rest of this. These come with a wiring diagram so they're pretty straightforward. All of the hard stuff is done. Uh, and this is actually designed for a, a normal LP or, uh, or SG I think. This might be one of the LP setups. So this part I think would probably already be done if this wiring harness was made specifically for an ES335 it's taken apart like this because you usually have to feed those right through the body but I don't have to do that in this case I, the switch is in the same cavity as everything else so I don't have to run it through like you would on an LP so I'm just going ahead and following the diagram and very simply soldering that stuff in place now this is easy on this piece of cardboard but it would be a lot easier if I had this secured somehow maybe left it in the box um, but for the purpose of filming it this is what we're going with. So I'm just putting a little hook on the ends of these things. I've tinned all of the lugs and then I just put my hooked piece of wire through the lug where it's tinned by heating it up and pushing it through and then letting it cool and we're good to go. Once the harness itself is wired up I just have to connect the pickups and for this well this is the best way that I could find to kind of get myself set up here so I use a piece of paper towel to protect everything and I'm just wiring those pickups on. Um, mostly this just involves connecting one wire to each of two of those pots <laughs> and then uh, soldering the ground onto the back. The one other thing is make sure you include that ground wire that we put to the bridge post. Okay, it goes, just goes to the ground on the back. Again, this isn't a wiring tutorial and it's not a soldering tutorial. Uh, I'm not stellar at either one of those things, but here we go. It's pretty straightforward, and like I said at the beginning, if I can do it, you can do it. So now I've got I've got a little hook there. You can make one of those out of a an old wire coat hanger, but the key is it's got to have a little hook on the end. And the first thing you do is you feed your output jack uh, pieces onto there. So your output jack washer and nut need to go on that. And uh, if you don't do that, you're not going to be able to screw it in place. And here for this setup, I'm just feeding this through. Some of these have the hole in the side of the guitar, which is actually easier. But anyway, I feed it through and then I use the hook to just hook around the ring and pull it up through the hole. Pretty straightforward. 
Once it's through the hole, here's the key point. I had that washer and nut already on there, so I just drop them down onto it and tighten them up a little bit. And then I'm going to use that hook again to hold it in place and tighten that up a little bit more using my little Hosco cube here, which, uh, which lets me tighten a bunch of stuff on this guitar. Honestly, getting the output jack and the switch in place, pretty straightforward. These ones were actually pretty easy. Uh, it's the pots that were a huge pain, but I'll show you how I did those in a minute. So the, the switch, because of its proximity to the F-hole, I decided to do that next. I probably should have done it last. I think it got in my way as I did the rest of these a little bit. But I decided to do it next because low-hanging fruit. And I just fed it in there with my hand and made sure it was switching in the correct direction. And then went ahead and bolted it in place. Pretty straightforward. Again, in retrospect here... I maybe should have left that to the very end. It would have given me some more room to work and it would have gotten a bunch of that wire out of the way, at least at the beginning, that I could have then jammed in there later. But I didn't do that. So I didn't make it easy on myself. Now what I'm doing is actually feeding some aquarium tube through there. This is just eighth inch tubing. It's relatively flexible, which makes it, well, it's quite flexible, which makes this not too difficult. I feed it through the holes. I make sure I cut it long enough so that it's hanging out of the holes. And then I feed it onto the top of the pots so the you can actually put it right on the top. Um, these are broader shaft than normal. They're wider shaft than normal and they're split shafts. So I actually feed it onto half. Um, but with the smaller ones, you could feed it right over top of the whole thing for the most part. So I'm cutting off chunks of that. I bought a, a spool of it, kind of. And I'm feeding those through each of these four holes uh, so that I can get those in place. And the rest of this is, well, there's not a lot of science to this, really. Maybe there is, but if there is, I don't know it. Without breaking the wires that this thing is made of, because the Gun Street ones are actually a little bit rigid, I'm trying to just carefully feed those in and get them in place. Uh, the tubes help me guide them into place and when they when they get to the right location they help me pull them through so that I can then put the bolt on or the nut on rather the washer and the nut and for that purpose all I have to do is feed the washer and the nut over the tube. I don't have to get the thing fully in place first per se uh, to the point where the tube doesn't have to hold it. I can continue holding the tube and then use the washer and the nut and feed them over the tube to get them in place. Uh, that's really about all there is to this. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. These are already basically installed. They just need a little tightening at this point. But there's not a lot of there's not a lot of methodology here. It's just working them into place, putting those items over top, and getting them secured. And that's it. That's the <laughs> install for the electronics. That's about all the information I have for several probably at what felt like hours worth of work. It probably wasn't, but it felt like it. Now I'm just getting the rest of the hardware in. There's not a whole lot special about this, but uh, yeah, I'm just bolting things into place at this point, basically. So I'm using small pilot holes to get this secured. Uh, there's a full block down the middle of this particular guitar kit, so I could drill all the way in there and make sure that this is properly secured with the three screws. And then this hole I should have done before painting. Honestly, that would have been the smart thing. But no damage. Pretty easy, honestly. It just would have made more sense to get it done beforehand. That's all. Next up, I'm my fretboard's dirty from being taped and everything. So I'm, I'm cleaning that up. And I'm using kind of one of my new favorite products here, the Odie's Oil. Uh, that's available at Zolo Music Gear as well big surprise <laughs> and I'm using a little very light abrasive scotch pad to put that on carefully I'm gonna do the whole fretboard in that and then wipe off the excess with a rough rag that's what they recommend and then you just kinda leave it and it looks great looks much better than it did before it no longer dry and uh, and very clean and I'm gonna do the same to the back of the neck which I said in my polishing video I'm doing that to take off that heavy kind of shine on the back because I find those gloss finishes a little bit sticky. So taking an abrasive to this and putting this hard wax oil on the back deals with that. It's not sticky anymore. And I just kind of buff off the excess as usual. With Odie's, every time you use it, you just buff off all of the excess and we're good to go. 
Next up is the tuners. You guys have seen me do this on a bunch of guitar kits, so there's really nothing new here. I'm just checking that I have them in the right order because they're generally staggered tuners. These are the Solo Pro. They're in the Black Nickel, which is, I think, my favorite. It's beautiful. Looks really cool. Kind of a transparent black over metallic. And I'm getting those secured in there, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go, go around to the back of the headstock and drill our pilot holes. Now, that's where you have to be very careful about depth. You don't want to drill all the way through. I recommend using a marker, but you can also just kind of set the depth on your drill a little bit if, you, if you've done it a bunch of times and you know what you're doing. So that's what I'll end up doing. I'm using a socket to bolt these on. I know Stumac probably sells the same thing, but, uh, but much more expensive. But for me, it's just a piece that I'm putting on the end of my screwdriver. Not all that pricey. I like specialty tools as much as the next guy, but if there's a normal tool that does the same job, then, uh, well, I can't really justify it. This, again, is the finicky part. This is not something I generally do before painting, but you can. You can do a mock-up install, get these holes drilled in advance before painting, and uh, save yourself a little bit of the risk. It's not a bad idea. I just don't do it. The main thing there is just be careful of the depth because you do need to drill in far enough to do a proper pilot hole for your screws. These tiny little screws will break if you have to put a bunch of force on them, so the pilot hole is important. Uh, but if you drill in too far, you're going to end up coming through the front of your headstock, and you probably won't be too happy with yourself if you do that. So that's what we're trying to avoid. All in all, though, it's not that difficult. You just have to assert a little bit of caution. Pay attention when you're doing it. Now this is where things get kind of, well, I, I'd like to think they were interesting the whole time, but we're going to use a brass nut here. This is a Solo Pro brass nut. Solo Pro, so you know where it comes from. Uh, they have a couple different heights. I may try to add the right one there so I wouldn't have to do a bunch of filing. Then I just install my bridge and my tailpiece. So the bridge is very straightforward. You screw it in. You guys all know how to do that with a tunematic bridge. And then the string up on these is slightly more difficult than on some other guitars because you've got that floating tail piece kind of but it's not that difficult you just load the strings in first and then go ahead and and put them in place load the strings into the tail piece get it secured and uh, string it up this would be more difficult if i wasn't using locking tuners though the locking tuners were a a, a help on this they were a nice touch they made things a little bit easier on me and here is what we're left with Check out how those pickups look. A, lot, a really beautiful hardware combination on this one. Uh, at least I think it is. A little bit eclectic. I've got the gold knobs on there that, at least when I put them on, seem to look the best of the options I tried. Brass nut, again, a little bit unusual. But then we've got the black nickel tuners, the black pickups, the chrome bridge and tailpiece. Uh, just I think this looks awesome the way it is. I think the gold ties it in with the burst. Love this paint job. As I'm sure you can tell, I'm really happy with how this whole thing turned out, and I hope you guys like it too. Well, I think that might be it. This thing needs a setup job now, of course, and I still have to test it out. Uh, and, well, i got to clean it off. <laughs> but anyway, I, I have to test it out and see if, see if it's going to actually work. Um, if I screwed up the wiring and I have to take all that out and redo it, the next video you see on this build may be it burning in a fire pit because that took me an extraordinarily long time and, uh, and it wasn't fun. But the rest of the build was super fun. Putting this burst on here was super fun. I think this looks ridiculously cool and I can't wait to hear how it sounds. And I'm really excited to try out this brass nut too. I might change that to a black one at some point, but for now, really want to test that out, see how, how it sounds as well. Can't wait to check out these pickups. I'm really happy with this one. Hopefully I stay that way when I plug it in. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't checked out the rest of the series, please do so. The paint job was fun and everything. There's, there's a lot's happened on this one and it's taken me a long time. But anyway, hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you did, feel free to give the video a thumbs up. I appreciate it, it helps me out. And remember to subscribe so that you can see the demo of this, which will be in another video. Uh, hopefully I'll probably do one myself and then hopefully I can get someone else in here to demo it as well, assuming I can get it to sound proper. I'm nervous. <laughs> I hate wiring. Anyway, again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one and I will see you next time.